Welcome to Stellar Drift, a Stars Without Number podcast. This is episode two, going around our virtual tabletop. We have myself, I'm Ben, the game master or referee for the game. My name's Jackson, and I play Billy Lap, or should I say Keelix Bane. Last week, I tried to fool the Cube Hotel receptionist, which would have worked fine if Raina didn't have some more physical ideas. I feel like it would be great if Raina went into it at this point, but I think it's my turn. I'm Luke, and I play a VI by the name of RV96, who didn't know three-minute cab drivers could talk. My name is Michelle, and I play Vicky, a VI worker bot star fairer and ex-barista, and I'm still full of coffee beans. Hi, I'm Z. I play Reyna, aka Sasha Fury, who likes to hack into military drones and knock helpless hotel receptionists unconscious. And I would just like to make a point that I gave you an almost impossible task of a uh, difficulty check of 12 to hack that drone, and you got it. And, uh, and here we are. Uh, so we're continuing off from the last episode where the party were inside uh, the shuttlecraft that the, uh, what we I guess that we're calling them is the other party, which consists of Keelix Bane, Sasha Fury, and Datum or Datum. Um, so as we were in the middle of, oh, sorry, uh, we were in the middle of the, the party, um, trying to move some boxes around in the, uh, the interior of the craft. So I'm going to bring us into that. Um, so you had the two crates of, uh, what we'd call, uh, what we'd call the, the spare parts. So the two boxes of spare parts. And there was also a large green box labeled four stone. Now, as you were moving some of the crates and boxes around, um, you did make a little bit of noise. I think it was specifically RV 96 maybe made the noise. Um, and you started to hear some footsteps um, from up above, like up above in the, the top cabin of the, uh, of the shuttlecraft that you're in. Um, as the footsteps appear to be coming closer to the staircase, I would like to understand what is everyone currently doing? How, what are your actions towards this? Um, Billy is immediately running to one of the corn, far corners of the room from where the noise is coming from and trying to get behind some cargo. Okay, awesome. Uh, Vicky might do the same and find another nook to hide behind. Okay. There are uh, like a decent amount of crates. Um, for most of you, I would say it's probably not too hard to hide. For someone of maybe Raina's stature, it might get a little bit, uh, a little bit harder. Raina will try his best to hide behind one of the crates. RV ninety six uh, motions furiously to Raina to hide behind the smugglers' hatch, the false wall. Oh yes, yeah, that's a good idea. I'd say that there's enough space. You may have to move the crate out, but yes, there'd, there'd be space for a, a humanoid in it. I'm going to hide behind whichever box Raina was hiding behind. As you all sort of quickly move into hiding positions, um, you hear a, a voice in what you probably would describe, I guess, as a um, uh, more of a regional sort of uh, accent. You sort of hear uh, sort of, uh, Kalix, Sasha, is that you? D did you find a buyer? And you hear the, the steps coming sort of down the staircase now and... Uh, hearing the figure as they uh, approach and almost open the door. Billy is still crouched out behind the cargo. Mm -hmm. And he suddenly kind of clears his voice. <clears throat> yep, yep, that looks good here and here and here. Ah. Hello, you must be uh, Dartum. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so you see a figure approach who uh, I could only describe as probably comes from the backwaters of a planet somewhere. Uh, he's got a bit of a wide sort of stare. Uh, he sort of looks at you with a couple of crooked teeth, and he's very hyper, um, very cybernetically enhanced. He sort of looks at you, and again, sort of with his uh, sort of accent, he says, uh, who, who are you? Hello, I, I'm, I'm William. And uh, I was not prepared. <laughs> One second. <laughs> um, what, what do you mean? <clears throat> just out of character, don't worry about him. <clears throat> now, once again, and see. Um, no. My name's William, and uh, I'm here to just check up on your cargo so you're not uh, smuggling anything through. I'm with the uh, Callisto government. Yeah, we, uh, we, we paid our fees. Is it just no, no, you in no. here? Uh, uh, no, I've got, uh, oh, there's, uh, I've got a colleague or two also helping me check. Um, if you'd like to come out, RV, and... Uh, yes, no, look. I found something. This is what your taxpayer money goes towards. I stand up and indicate towards the force dome that we uncovered. Illegal weaponry. 
that's that's a big no-no in these parts. Hold 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 on hold on that, wait, that 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 definitely wasn't our cargo. It's on your ship, my friend. H- how do I know you didn't plant it there? How do I know that you didn't have it there? Do you well, with? well, look, look, look. I, I got a drone going outside. I, I can pull up the footage and I can check. Please do. Okay. Uh, Doctor Ray, did you see a drone outside? I uh, indicate. Not that he can see me towards Dr. Ray, who's hidden behind the uh, smuggler's hatch. Oh, a drone, you say? Yes, I think we saw a military spec one outside. Yes, there indeed was one. Yeah, I got it on uh, standby to keep out the rats trying to break into the ship. Right. Mm. right. It's a good thing you have that. It's very astute, very wise. Yeah, just just give me a moment. I'm having a hard time connecting to it. One second. Um, Rayna will quickly actually allow him to take uh, connecting control okay. over it again i'll disconnect with it okay uh as you disconnect he almost immediately the connection sort of resumes again he says uh, uh, uh yeah okay let me let me just roll back and he sort of goes back and then he's sort of checking the footage but he realizes that uh you're not there in any of the the recent footage he says uh, uh hold, hold on hold on keep scrolling keep scrolling but yeah that's a bit weird that the drone didn't pick you up at all when you when you came in must be by coincidence. Yeah, must be. William, you're our technical specialist, aren't you? Uh, yes, yes. I'm sure you can explain to this guy the importance of getting top quality drones. Of course I can. These models. Now see, the model yeah. you've got here, it's not good for this job. It can occasionally uh, have a patrol that leaves, leaves dead zones. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, leave you with my name and number. And maybe we can sort you out with something that's uh, a little more up to code for these hangers. He, uh, he's in thought for a moment. So, uh, yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, I better uh, make sure this doesn't happen again. Otherwise, Kelix will have my ass. Uh, yeah, and sorry, what did, what did you want to do with that crate? Well, you can't have this. We have to confiscate it. This is very dangerous. If you tried to operate this without prior instruction... It could be a really bad time. Uh, uh, we're we're going to confiscate this. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. And we'll come back to finish our search. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Now, look, that, 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 that's fine. You can take it. Uh, like I said, it wasn't ours. Uh, VI bot, can you give me a hand with this? Of course, Master RV96. Uh, I'd like to carry it outside and just put it next to the ship. Sure. Okay, uh, between RV96 and um, Vicky, you are able to walk at the short sort of um, journey outside of the airlock and sort of basically place it just outside of the ship. Beautiful. While we're down there, do we see uh, Sasha? Or, like, can we see them around? I like to roll. I'll, I'll give you two things. Uh, I will get you to make a roll. Um, so you can make mm-hmm. a roll to see what you see. Um, uh, you can probably give me a notice check with a stat that you feel yep. is most appropriate. And I'm also going to roll a dice just to see uh, <laughs> if there is a chance of them coming back at this exact moment, which I will uh, roll privately. I'm feeling charisma. We're right in the middle of this big deception. And I think that just is the most appropriate. Uh, I rolled an eight total. Oh, well, that was a fun roll. Uh, you do see from what you've checked, at least on your scans, um, or at least both of what also um, Rainer has picked up from scanning the uh, Sasha's uh, data pad, is you do appear to be you do appear to see uh, two figures approaching. Um, one sort of a, a taller, sort of muscular figure, and one sort of more of a, a, a slimmer build. Um, they're currently uh, sort of yelling at a sort of a um, uh, like a worker, like a landing berth worker, sort of f- farther off in the distance. But you can see that they look to be uh, on their way towards the uh, towards the shuttlecraft. Yes. Okay. All right. Tricky. Shall we quickly go hide this before they notice? Mm-hmm. <sighs> yes. I kind of get the impression that they didn't know about it. That it was covered in dust in the smuggler's den. That I reckon they just got this ship. Didn't even know it's on board. So I reckon we can keep playing this deception. I'm interested to see, out of character, how things are progressing on board. 
I don't know if I can talk my way out of this one. Yeah, well, so Datum has been very, uh, like, sort of overwatching as you sort of look around at the crates and stuff. So he didn't seem too phased about the um, the four stone uh, crate that you've removed from the ship, but all the other contents, he's been very, um, very careful of. You know, like he's sort of letting you if you need to look mm -hmm. and open stuff, you can look at it. But he's being very mindful that like nothing is going missing or anything else like that. I would say, given the conversation or at least the shading that's involved, you probably have several minutes before uh, what appears to be Sasha and um, Kelix approach the ship. All right. Uh, I'd like to walk back on board and just see what Billy's up to. <laughs> Billy's still kind of in conversation with Dartum about some irrelevant point of uh, his bow inspection. <laughs> when he notices you walk back inside with the with the package, and he says to uh, he says to Billy, "Oh, one moment, sorry," and turns around and walks quickly over to you, Avi, noticing that you're still carrying uh, our package. He's like, "What's the what's the deal?" No, no, I, sorry. we put the package off the oh, ship. Oh no! Downstairs. I thought you brought it back in. All right, we should go. No, no. Uh, Actually, no. It's a workout. It's a workout. Uh, Please <laughs> the top, Jackson. Okay, I've got the package. You have got the package. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Vicky. <laughs> rewinding back moments earlier, uh, walking off of this ship with the force dome in hand with Vicky, uh, I notice Sasha Fury, and look to Vicky, look back at Sasha, and then motion to Vicky. We walk back up on top of the ship. So we walk back into the hangar of the cargo bay uh, and look to Billy. One moment, please. Who sees this with the package in hand. <laughs> sure. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> uh, one moment, please, just with my colleagues. Thanks. <clears throat> Billy kind of turns around and... Oh, sorry, do you want to interject? <laughs> Saying loudly enough for everyone in the room to hear, I say, uh, William, we have a problem. I believe this force dome is activated. We only have minutes. Only minutes? Dardum sort of shout, what, 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 yeah. what? The what does that mean? This, have you, have you interacted with this, this weapon yet? No, 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 I, uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't touched it. Are you sure? Cause it's active. These things, what? Dr. Ray, you, you're the specialist here. How many minutes do you think we have? Yeah, it looks pretty oh, active. God. We, we have to get this out of here. We we have no time to lose. What, why did you bring it back on the ship then? There's only one way to get out of here, and it, it's a, it's a long shot. Uh, I I might survive. I'm not sure about the rest of humans. We, we we're going to have to commandeer the ship. What? Would you like me and to fly? There's, there's that's why you're here, pilot. Of course. Assume the controls. Everybody else. Uh, we're taking authority. Wait, 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 hold on. I, I, I got to run this. There's no time to argue. We have two minutes. <laughs> Vicky uh, marches up to Jardim and uh, attempts to move him aside to head okay. up into the car. Uh, he's still a little per perplexed. Um, uh, I, I like I like where this is going. Um, I would like... So IV has been leading a lot of this um, uh, discussion, <laughs> let's say, or at least the attempt, attempted persuasion for this. Um, uh, I would like a roll just to see how it goes. It can be assisted, so one person can try to assist. Well, multiple people can try to assist, but only one can actually provide the, the check for it. I would like from you, uh, so I would like from someone a talk check as the primary role. Um, someone can try to provide an assist via another skill. I reckon, I reckon, uh, Dr. William, you're, you're the boss here. I reckon you can do a lead check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon. I reckon you can convince the DM. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I can. I was. I was going to put a soft hand on, on Datum's back and kind of, um, quickly but politely try and usher him out the door. Well, yeah. Um. So for for our listeners, so rules as written lead, uh, as is written in the core rulebook, is convince others to also do whatever it is you're trying to do. Um. Uh. Talk might persuade them that following you is smart, but lead can make them do. It even if they think it's a bad idea. So I think you're right. That's actually a pretty good, uh, pretty pretty good check to make. Yes. For a second, I thought you were going to say um, 
Sorry, I just wanted to read that, and now it's in the chat. Um, for a second, I thought you were going to say lead was only for like bolstering your teammates. Oh, sure. so I got a bit worried. Uh, um, yes, I will uh, take a lead check. Lovely. But uh, to do so, Billy is going to have to like try to take the initiative on like getting mm -hmm. Dardam out of the way and like getting everyone upstairs and trying to take over the control yeah. ship. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to roll and begin talking. Okay. <sighs> Uh, stat? I can choose the stat? Uh, yeah, convince me. Okay, so it, uh... Sorry, it was default... This is a game question. It was defaulting to strength. I can change that to, quote-unquote, anything I want. <laughs> well, yeah, as long as yeah, I can yeah. convince you. Of Just try and convince, like, yeah, whatever you feel like is most appropriate. I mean, oh. strength lead can happen in some cases, I suppose. Uh, yeah, um, especially in Dr. Ray's case. Um, <laughs> but in this case, I think I'm going to have to use Charisma. That seems appropriate to me, yep. Yeah, uh, I'm going to roll. Uh, so I will also say that someone yeah. can try to provide an assist with it being a different skill. Just have to explain to me how you're trying to assist and you can provide a plus one to the roll if you meet the DC. Um, Datum is not the smartest of folks. I'm going to say the difficulty is going to be eight on the roll. Uh, that is what Billy is going to have to beat. I'm happy to, but I'm also happy if Raina wants to chime in. Use my punch skill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he is the technical expert in force. Raina's not the most <laughs> surprisingly effective too. Uh, look, I, I guess I've been doing a lot of talking, so maybe I just stick to the sure. talking. I think. Uh, I'm going to roll talk with charisma. Yeah, that's fair. Nice. All right. I rolled a five on the assist. Uh, okay, so no bonus to the roll. Yeah, shame. It's all right. <clears throat> Jeepers. All right, I'm going to roll. Yeah. Yes. I got a nine. Oh, actually, that's not that great, but I got a nine. Okay. Uh, the difficulty was eight. Uh, Datum is, at, at this point, is convinced he's going along with your plan. He's following the okay. your, your supposed plan. Okay. Um, so I have my arm in kind of the middle of his back at the moment, mm -hmm. and we're walking towards the airlock. And I say, uh, so Datum, you're flying the ship with multiple other people? You have other stakeholders? Uh, yeah, yeah. Kelix and Sasha, they uh, own the ship with me, yeah. Ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> Miss Fury and Mr. Bane. Yes, of course, we've got them on our uh, itinerary here as well. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to contact them as soon as we've uh, reached safe haven and ensure the device is not detonated and we'll uh, provide you a recompense. A very uh, generous recompense. Yep. Well, you're going to bring the ship back though, right? Ah, uh, well, that would be what the recompense is for. Now, just through here to the yellow. But, but... <laughs> he continues saying this as you're just pushing, pushing him out the door. <laughs> <laughs> you are aware of what recompense means. <laughs> yeah, but, okay. but, but, but my stuff, he says as the uh, the door shuts on him. Hey. I kind of uh, dust my hands off and turn, strut, try and strut back in through the airlock. Uh, okay. Well done, William. Well done, Dr. Ray. Vicky, you've got to make this piloting look good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. Right. Uh, at this stage, the four of you are in the cargo ship, or at least the lower level of this uh, shuttlecraft. We have two minutes to get out of here. I think he's going to start heading up the stairs. Okay. So you move your way up the staircase. Um, uh, it's a small, again, this is a pretty small shuttlecraft, but, you know, there's a little bit of room. Um, so the stairs lead up into what appears to be a main habitable area for the shuttlecraft. Um, uh, there's a number of smaller boxes, but these ones are a bit more movable. Most of the actual cargo was held below um, in sort of the cargo area. Um, you can see sort of off to the far wall, more towards the port side, is like a refresher with some sanitization sort of utensils, you know, toilet and stuff like that. Um, you hear behind you is like the light hum of what appears to be the shuttlecraft's engines in sort of like a standby state. And there appears to be some rooms further into the front of the ship. Um, it's the intention at this point to head pretty much straight to the cockpit. Is that what Vicky's intending to do? Yeah, I'm going to fly this ship out of the shipyard. Yeah, going to get it out? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you walk further towards the front of the ship, you see what appears to be like a makeshift uh, bedding that uh, you would assume is what Dardum has been living in. Um, this was what I guess you'd call the main um, passenger seating of this shuttlecraft. It would have been able to comfortably hold nine, maybe ten people. Um, it is sort of, you know, the chairs have been sort of like broken slightly, sort of being made into a bit of a bed. There's some mattresses, um, food packets and stuff laying around and all that sort of stuff. 
Um, uh, walking past that, you enter into what appears to be like a single chaired cockpit um, that has sort of a couple of computer screens and consoles and stuff ready to uh, ready to accept input. Ah, uh, it has been so long. And uh, Vicky goes up to the controls. Okay. And attempts to dial up the ship. Okay. Uh, I will say the first thing you notice as you sort of sit down and start to get familiar with the controls is that a small screen on one of the displays indicates that Hangar Bay, Hangar Bay release is locked pending payment. Oh no. We are trapped in here until we pay. Comes to the Hangar management. To Yanis Makopoulos, perhaps. Yes. Come in. <clears throat> Come in, Yanis. Yanis Markopoulos. Uh, and this is like open like over like the wide band, is it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, so going over the wide band channel, um, you hear a response. I forget what Yana sounds like, but it's uh, a very sort of busy gentleman response, sort of saying, "Yeah, yeah, hang about eight. Uh, what can I? What can I do for you?" We've we've got a situation on board the shuttlecraft. We, during our maintenance, have discovered uh, active illegal weaponry. And it's it's bad. Okay. It's 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 locking on right now. L locking onto what? I've tried to shut it down, but it seemed to have some backup power source. It's 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 going for the like highest level target here. I don't know what it is, but it's sucking for it. Uh yeah. Do I need to call the authorities on this? Look, it's got a timer on it. It's like counting down from ten. Uh. I don't know what it's going to do, but I'm really scared. Wait, 10 seconds, 10 minutes, 10 hours? What are we talking about? Uh, it says nine now, so I'm assuming seconds. Christ. <laughs> wait, Christ doesn't... Uh, look. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, no, sorry. It's it's Greek. It's a Greek plan. Uh, Zeus! Zeus Almighty! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hades. Uh, look, it says eight. Uh, uh, well, I'm at the controls. I was trying to fly it out of here, but it says payment locked. My yeah, yeah. No, the, the owners of the ship go. they they still owe they still owe money. Yeah. Yeah, they're off board. Uh, maybe you can talk to them in the next seven seconds, or like they're in the hangar. Just go down and ask them. I uh, get the ship out of here. You get the guys and be like, "Hey, give me money." Hold, hold on, there's a lot of information to process. He says it. He's sort of. You can sort of cool. hear him panicking on the on the background of the comms. Uh, do you know what? Uh, the admin building is. It says it's selected that as the target. What? Yes, it says admin. Uh, do you know anyone in admin? Uh, uh, you might not have a... Uh, oh, okay, hold, hold on. Uh, look, it says five. Look, I I'm liking this story so much. I, I love what <laughs> uh, what you've constructed with this. I'm going to say that this is... Uh, uh, th this is this is not even needing a role. Um, this is such a... <laughs> Such sort of uh, invested storytelling. There's so much believability in the voice. Uh, yeah, the, the free free roll action. Um, couple of please. I don't want anyone to get hurt. <laughs> uh, okay, Yanis. Vicky, uh, try the controls again. Quick. <laughs> Yanis is sort of uh, hold on. You sort of hear some uh, tapping sort of in the background. Um, the terminal in front of um, Vicky's uh, sort of. Uh, at least on Vicky's console, um, where it was saying before that it had a um, uh, like uh, hang bay uh, release locked. That uh, screen sort of um, disappears, and sort of some uh, above the ship, you sort of hear the sound of large machinery as like these sort of um, metal door sort of releases sort of um, unlock, and the actual sort of um, uh, sort of the hangar bay itself sort of begins to open. He sort of says, oh, "Okay, look, I, I, I'm." I'm releasing it, and you can sort of see he's like standing further away from the the Vicky, radio now, it. preparing to run. Vicky, quick! Um, but you you got to bring the ship right back down, okay? We'll do. Vicky, please. Vicky, it please. says one. I don't know how many seconds are in one, but it's not enough. Okay, uh, Vicky gets a seven on a pilot check. Uh, you rolled strength, strength for that. Pilot? Oh, sorry. How do you? How do you? There's no power you? steering on the ship. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Um. What would that be? A dexterity constitution intelligence? Uh, dex pilot five. would probably be the most appropriate for this. Yeah. Uh, that's an eight well, on the check. Better than your strength pilot check. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, an eight on a pilot check. Uh, you're not doing any fancy moves to get out, but it is enough that it looks like you are leaving with great haste. Uh, the shuttlecraft quickly lifts itself up um, outside of the sort of... Um, 
landing bay area, you can see that Datum, having seen uh, Sasha as well as uh, Kalix, is sort of starting to walk up to them. He's sort of pointing at the ship. Um, and he's sort of, you can see sort of both, you know, the very faintly as the ship is continuing to rise, both Kalix and Sasha sort of looking in um, almost like confusion as Datum tries to explain to them what's happening. You can sort of see him trying to explain like, visually trying to use the like explain the word dome with his hands sort of trying to go like round shape stuff like that pointing at the ship um and they just sort of seem to be quite infuriated with him um at this point the shuttlecraft has taken off and you are sort of in like a light um sort of uh well actually uh how where is vicky trying to fly to is she just like maintaining flight is she flying off somewhere or i'm gonna start heading towards where um uh what's his name uh Stavros wants us to head. Okay. Yeah. At the radio telescope? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Does the ship have guns? Uh, this shuttlecraft does not have weaponry. Oh. <laughs> well, I was going to say we should fire something off just for show, but. Oh, well. like make something explode? Yeah. Just shoot a single <laughs> laser pistol out the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything we can just jettison. Brian, do you have a laser pistol? I don't have um, a laser pistol. Well, well, talk talk me through this. You guys spent several minutes looking through the cargo hold of the shuttlecraft. Uh, was there anything that you maybe have found or found that uh, would make for a suitable explosion? Is anybody uh, proficient with chemistry or something? We could find two common chemicals and put them together. Surely Rain has found something explosive. These two guns. <laughs> <laughs> Rainer. Did you find anything back there that could make an explosion? I want to sell this story. Well, GM, um, should I take a roll to see what uh, I find? Sure. I'll probably say you could give me a... Uh, probably just give me a notice check. Notice? All right. A6. <clears throat> a strength notice. Very nice. <laughs> oh, no. It's good enough. Anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll say it. we'll say it's fine. It makes sense. You've been lifting boxes and crates. He uses and everything with strength. It's yeah. like flexing while he's looking around. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's kind of like picking up the boxes yeah. and trying to uh, guess what's inside. Yeah, it's you like, did find a yeah, crate that's full heavy. of um, power cell type A's, which uh, if hit with proper a laser weaponry could cause an explosion. Does anyone carry laser weaponry? As do Does I. Does anybody else have a laser pistol? You have a laser pistol. I do. Vicky's currently piloting. Oh, yeah. You're fine, this ship. <laughs> you may borrow my laser pistol. Well, I think we can just use mine. How good's your aim? As it turns out, mine's trash, but I'm willing to have a go. Billy, you got an experience with a pistol? Oh, I might be a dab hand. I've, I've... I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. Look, my pistol's more of a show, so if anyone else wants to take a shot, <laughs> feel free. Uh, Billy like lets out an exaggerated <laughs> sigh and storms over to Vicky and holds his hand out. Vicky uh, hands him the uh, laser pistol. Okay. Oh, thank you, my dear. And I walk back over to Rainer, kind of dangle it in front of his face, and kind of a last <laughs> chance kind of a... <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I'm not the one going to be shooting that. That's fair enough. Down to old Billy. Yeah. You ever done clay pigeon shooting? <laughs> Uh, well, that's best. It's best left unsaid. I'll take that as a yes. Vicky, open up the cargo bay. Of course. And uh, Vicky punches the cargo release button. Yeah. Uh, so as Billy goes into the cargo bay, um, finding the crate that Raina recognized. Um, yeah. Oh, Raina goes down as well. Oh, oh sure, sure. Um, so at this time, you see, or at least you find the the crate which has the um, power cells, um, and is at, you sort of as at the time that you arrive down the staircase, um, Vicky has released the uh, cargo bay door uh, release, um, and it is sort of like the back back part of the sort of um, ship is opened up. Gotcha. I uh, kind of motion to the the box of A cells. All right, rainbows, give it your best throw. What'd you kind just call me? <laughs> <laughs> kind of look Rainbow. at the pistol, trying to familiarize myself with it. Well, since we want to have some fun, I drop this out the cargo hold. You shoot it. Yep, that's the plan. 
Right, so Reyna goes over, grabs one of the power cells. Yep. Ready? As I'll ever be. No pressure. Cool. And he just launches it out the cargo. <laughs> sure. should, we, should we do two rolls? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Why not? You guys didn't make a roll for stealing the... Sh- well, for actually... Uh, yeah, convincing... Uh, convincing... Uh, uh, Yanis. So yeah, let's do it. Two rolls. So I'll take a strength exert, unless you can convince me otherwise, Rayna, to throw or to hurl the power cell. Strength exert. Uh, and Billy, um, I'm guessing they'll probably be a shoot, maybe deck shoot. Yeah. Yeah. I have a nine. Okay. Nine on strength exert. That Ooh. is enough. Uh, That's a good yeah. Throw. You you pretty pretty confidently hurl it back towards the ground as the shuttlecraft is continuing to sort of take off. Um, sort of, you know, you know, getting getting sort of a few dozen meters up in the air, you know, getting sort of a little bit of height. Um, Vicky, sort of seeing, I guess maybe this is happening. Were you sort of slowing the sh- shuttle down a little bit just so there's a bit of a show? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Give it the parabola and we're in zero grav. <laughs> <laughs> just before she don't uh, dive bombs. No. Um, <clears throat> alrighty. Having seen Raina's throw out the window, Billy's gonna close one eye. Use both hands and take his best shot. Okay. Ooh, nice. nine. Okay. I was going to say the difficulty was eight. So that uh, that is on the money. Just. Phew. So simultaneously, as Rayna hurls a power cell, um, Billy is able to get a shot, one eye open, uh, <laughs> and manages to land with the laser pistol right in the sort of like um, warning: "Do not shoot here." A uh, little sticker <laughs> on the power cell. Um, <laughs> And that is just enough to uh, cause a, a medium-sized explosion under the back of the shuttle as the uh, shuttlecraft takes off. Billy, uh, yeah, oh, I did it! <laughs> he turns quite around, really excited. Quite Billy the kid we have right here. <laughs> uh, Billy, uh, Billy excitedly runs back up to the upper decks to share the news. Very nice. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so I'm guessing, Vicky, at this point, you were intending to go to um, uh, Stavros's location. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, so it is nighttime, I believe we had established. Uh, at least the story had begun at night, and I believe everything we've done so far is still at nighttime. Um, so it is nighttime flying. So you're sort of flying up, and you can sort of see the stars above. You know, you're sort of getting to a point where you're above the fog of most of Fogtown. Um your destination is the radio telescope on the sort of the upper hills or the upper mountain sides of um, Callisto. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the shuttlecraft itself, it is thankfully a short journey, maybe five, 10 minutes. Um, so the journey itself is quite short. Uh, while the transit is happening to get to the radio telescope, um, is anyone doing anything in particular on the ship? Vicky is simultaneously brewing some coffee in her um, chassis. Sure, makes sense. Yep. <laughs> Um, I think Billy. I think Billy's probably just relaxing after having made the shot. Maybe with the coffee. Great shot, Billy. Thank you, my dear. And I could say the same to you. Take a sip and burn my tongue. <laughs> Rain is getting some shut eye. Uh, so you you find uh, you find Datum's makeshift bed and blanket, and you just fit yourself right in. <laughs> right. 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 Oh. This is mine. Yes, thank you. Why do I imagine that Datum is... He's a smallish guy, right? Datum's quite small, yes. Imagine Reyna, like, sticking half out of this sort of makeshift yeah. sleeping bag. Like. Yeah, his, little, his feet just sort of stick out the end of the blanket. <laughs> RV, how is he handling the, uh, the most recent events? Uh, as pretty well, as far as you can tell. Mm-hmm. He's had his little data board up for a little bit on his wrist mount and making some notes and checking some information. But uh, it's not quite clear what he's doing. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, the rest of the journey itself is um, fairly quick, um, and you fly again. It's maybe a little bit harder to see, but you have to. You can rely on some sort of um, uh, automated communications that that sort of guide you to where you need to go. But you make your way to the radio telescope, which is sort of on the outskirts of town. Um, this is one of the ones that are sort of like built into like a natural dip in the environment. So the actual radio dish is sort of like within the ground. And then the uh, the sort of reflector arrays and stuff are like built into um, large, tallish pillars that are based around the uh, 
the exterior of the dish itself. Um, you find a, I guess you could say, a suitable location um, to land somewhere on sort of the outer stretches. There's a sort of a cluster of buildings and whatnot. Thankfully, the shuttlecraft isn't too big, so there is a suitable landing spot if you wanted to bring it down. Yeah, uh, Vicky brings it down gently. Okay. You're still getting used to the controls, but for a, a landing task, it's not uh, not too difficult for what you need to do. Excellent. Is that uh, like okay. a dish from like the Amazon in like Brazil or something? Uh, South America, yeah. South I think. America, yeah. And it like recently broke or something. Yeah, it broke badly. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so the shuttlecraft um, landed. Uh, like I said, there's a series of small buildings that are just outside, uh, sorry, just, just near where the shuttlecraft is parked. Um, I'd say that you're probably drawn enough attention by landing a shuttlecraft right next to a radio telescope that you see the familiar face of Stavros in his sort of blue um, uh, sort of uh, government attire. I see he's sort of, actually, sorry, he's wearing blue, but he's now wearing blue in pajamas, like a sort of a, a government employee pajama uniform. Um, and he sort of walks up. <laughs> he's got a sort of the nightcap with the sort of little... Um, Does he have the government's logo sort of emblazoned yeah. in the nightcap and the, oh. yeah, the breast of the... Of the... Yeah, he's sort of rubbing his funny. eyes. He's a little tired. But he did say he lived there. Greetings, Stavros. We have brought you the parts as requested. Oh, uh, I, I wasn't expecting you to come back so soon. Well, we were on a time limit. Uh, 60 hours, I think it was. Yes, not 60 minutes, but not that I'm complaining, of course. Uh, but, but, but please, please come in. I'll, uh, I'll brew us a cup. No need. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sort of, uh, oh, oh, well, uh. And, and um, <laughs> Vicky proffers a, uh, a coffee. He sort of, like, looks at you for a moment, sort of. Thank you, I guess. Um, it's a nice long black. Uh, he very carefully sort of takes a sip. Hmm. Not bad. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, but, but, but please, please. Um, yes. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind bringing in the equipment, of course, uh, bring, bring in the spare parts. Uh, we could just leave them inside the building for, for the time being. Uh, so the boxes of spare parts themselves will require two people. So as long as the four of you are happy to like move the boxes, then that's pretty much done. And we'll, uh, we can say that they're pretty much moved in. Yeah. Yep. Take the time Easy. to move them all in. Okay. Um, all right. Between the four of you, you move the spare parts in. Um, Stavros, again, sort of still half awake. Coffee's still running in th into your system. He says, well, I, again, I, I appreciate the urgency. Uh, tell me, I, when I met you at the bar, I didn't take you to be uh, ship owners. Uh, sorry, uh, which which one of you owns, uh, owns the ship? I noticed that none of you are talking. Uh, <laughs> usually, if someone owns a ship, they say that they own it. <laughs> it's, it's funny in this way. Well, you see, uh, the the three uh, ex colleagues of yours. Uh, I believe they stole this shit themselves, so we uh we took it off their hands. Oh my. <laughs> I see. Hmm. You can see Stavros is like secretly. Again, great urgency for this task. <laughs> yes. Yes, I suppose I did uh insist that it was quite urgent, yes. Hmm. He's sort of now considering all of his choices leading up to this moment. <laughs> uh well, I, I suppose that's fine. I <laughs> Hmm. Yes, well, I, I guess the spare parts, that, that, that's what's important. Anyway, uh, I guess it'll be your problem if they come after you. Anyway, uh, I suppose you're here for the rest of your payment. Hey, uh, didn't you say there was a bonus for finishing it, like, fast? You know, like, fast owes more money, right? I don't believe I was going to give you a super bonus or anything, but, hmm, given the circumstances... Super bonus? Did I did I say that? Uh, but yeah, uh, given the circumstance, yeah, I, I mean, it is the least you could do. I do recall hearing about a bonus. Well, I just, was going just to following along. I was <laughs> going to pay you the remainder of what I I promised you. Yes, for the time being, he gets out his data pad and he lines up another five hundred credits on top of the three hundred that you've already oh, wow. been given. Um, so eight hundred total, um, which he prepares on like um data or well, credit six that he prepares to send to each of you 
um, Isida says, well, I believe this should cover the urgency in which you've delivered this uh, or completed this task at least. And he starts handing out the, uh, the credit sticks to everyone for another 500 credits. Billy's um, eyes kind of widen when he sees how much. Uh, it's like, yes, yeah, I think, I think that's, that'll, that'll about do it. Why, thank you. I reach into my pocket and pull out a number of receipts. Uh, one for the ground taxi, the uh, three minute <laughs> fare. Uh, there's another one for a coffee that I held uh, on the way. I didn't realize that Vicky could make coffee at the time, but Stavros doesn't need to know that. Yeah. Um, and then another one for business uh, at the spaceport in the hangars. I uh, paid for parking. <laughs> are you just handing them uh, to Stavros I, I, I pass them to Stavros uh, and say uh, expenses incurred oh I didn't realize I had to pay for this usually the adventurers I hire pay for things themselves um, uh, a moment and he sort of goes and just finds like a random collection of sort of like uh, physical coins and sort of just ha- tries to hand them to you uh, do you, do you accept coins? Yes, we'll do. Good. And he gives you, uh, how much would you say all of these um, petty expenses cost? Like five credits. Okay. Well, he gives it's you so minuscule. five credits in, in coins. Mostly I'm just doing it out of habit. Fair. It's something people have visited. Habits? Last I checked, yes. You are a certainly odd bunch. Hmm. We do good work. Oh my, yes. I uh, I certainly won't complain about the, at least the urgency in which you completed the work. Uh, I do still have to get these parts installed, however. Um, uh, I suppose if you are looking for some further work, I could use some help around the lab for the next few days while I get the parts installed. Uh, I have a, an assistant running around here somewhere, but he, truth be told, he's, he's quite bad. Anyway. Uh, You're not very good at finding good colleagues, are you? Yes, it is becoming a bit of a habit for me. Uh, hmm. Indeed. I could be of assistance in fixing and installing stuff. Oh, you have some experience with uh, pretext spare parts? Yes. Well, that's very good to know. Uh, look, I, I did look at some of your details when I, I hired you for the original job. Uh, tell me, do the rest of you have some sort of uh, uh, fixing experience, any physical skills? Uh, there is some old uh, technical machinery that I might need some assistance with decoding as well. Technical, you say? Uh, somewhat technical, yes. Yeah. So you see, the dish itself can move slightly to uh, to pick up, uh, sort of pick up signals from from slightly different uh, different sort of angles on the horizon. Hmm. I think it's uh, require programming. More than likely, yes. If you were to put a a general skill definition on the term. Yes, programming would probably suit. Well, I'm your man. Wonderful. Look, please. And you sort of, you can sort of see him yawning. Uh, oh, I am in my pajamas. Uh, c- can we please re- resume this in the morning? Uh, if if you don't already have suitable accommodation in town, uh, I, I think there are some cots uh, in in a spare room where my assistant sleeps. Uh, you're more than welcome to stay in the lab for the time being, or you can return here in the morning. Before you go, Stavros, uh, is anyone else here other than your assistant and your good person? Uh, no, no. It's uh, <laughs> truth be told, we're not very well funded by the government. Uh, mm, it is yes, just me, and my good. assistant here. And um, is this a well-known place? I'd hate for the uh, your prior colleagues to figure out we'd be coming here. Did you tell them where this was? Uh, oh, you, you mean Kelix and, and Sasha? Yes, yes. I, I believe they know that I do work at the, uh, the radio telescope, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, ha- have you much security in case they do interfere? Uh, there's a fence. Electric. Security cameras? I Drones? think they may be somewhere. I haven't checked them in several months. Okay, that's okay. Uh, perhaps it would be good if I kept a lookout. And he sort of takes a moment. Oh, sorry, yes, the, the humanoid face got me. I forgot that you're an android. Yes. I'm sure you can tell in fact. Yes. 
Um, yes, well, if you could uh, allow me to monitor any sign of security, just, just keep an eye out. Uh, I think it'd be really beneficial to the group. Sure. Um, he goes and like goes to a sort of a side cupboard and brings out a couple of like blankets and pillows for Billy and Rainer. And he sort of fumbles through like a sort of a box and he sort of just comes out with like an extension cord uh, for <laughs> RV96 and, uh, and Vicky. Uh, uh, d- I, I, sorry, I don't have many uh, VI friends. Is this what you need? And he sort of passes you the extension cord. Vicky uh, picks it up. I suppose this will do. Ah, uh, good. Uh, well, if, you, if you'll excuse me, I, I'll happily uh, have a chat with you in the morning. Before you leave. Oh, yes. Um, dinner for Billy and I? Dinner? It's like <laughs> two in the morning now. Um, I, I think there's a vending machine. There's a delivery service further down in town, but I don't believe they deliver up the mountain this late. Well, Billy, I guess vending machine food for us. Hey. Don't forget to keep the receipt. <laughs> I'm no stranger to it. I uh, could always check the ship for food. This is true. You may now go, Stavros. Uh, thank you for your permission. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wanders off in his pajamas, going down a corridor hall. <laughs> he hates us. He's just dealing with adventurers. Uh, okay, so yeah, it is the day night cycle is like twenty hour days. So there's a couple of hours left of the night cycle, would say. Uh, so what is everyone doing? Um, I know RV stated that they were intending to um, sort of stay on a lookout position. Um, what was everyone else going to do for the next few hours? Uh, I think I'm going to sleep, considering it's 2 a.m. and I'm human. Yeah. Um, I might wait till the morning. Okay. Right now, we'll go to the vending machine. I guess realize that it might be a bit old school, where it takes coins. Yes. Rainer has no coins. So he will punch the vending machine. Okay. To break the glass. Can you give me a just... uh, strength punch, punch check? Yep, yeah, I'll do that. That's a 12. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> a whole like line of items just falls out of the machine. <laughs> he will just grab like as many things from the broken glass. And just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get a mixture of items, uh, lots of savory chips, um, uh, pretzels, some crackers, stuff like that, some sweet stuff, some chocolate bars. Oh, damn. That sounds yeah. so yum. Eat like a champion. Yeah. And then just walk so back to the, walk back to our sleeping quarters. Okay. Um, you find, at least the humanoids in the party, find there's a small room with what appears to be uh, a series of sort of like bunk beds. Um, almost laid out throughout the room. There is a figure in one of the far off bunk beds that appears to be asleep. His sort of head's turned facing away from you. Um, but there are several other bunk beds on the other side of the room that you are, can take if you wish. Bunk beds. Yeah. So Avi is outside. The humans are sleeping. Um, Vicky, what were you doing? Uh, Vicky excuses herself um, on the way. She's uh, heading back to the ship mm-hmm. to charge up i guess sure and um she dumps some coffee ground biscuits along the way outside just like does she dump them via the exterior of her unit yeah so a little hatch opens up at the back and then these little coffee ground biscuits go boop (laughs) (laughs) very good yeah and then um she's gonna go stay in the ship to charge up okay fair enough let's examine it looking for anything in particular or just inspecting yeah, see if anything needs like upgrading or fixing or anything. Uh, you do know that the ship currently uh, can't hold atmosphere, so it, sorry, can't it can't f- operate in vacuum. Um, but you had already identified that as a as a problem. Yeah. Uh, so Vicky might. Well, I don't know if she can do it while she's charging mm-hmm. up, but she might want to f- try fix it in her spare time. Okay, something you can work on later. Yeah. Yeah. Or- yeah. Avi. Uh- he does 
the surreptitious activities as yet undescribed. And that's that's the end of the description. Okay. Uh, so several hours pass. Uh, again, the moon has a pretty quick day-night cycle. So it's only a few hours of rest for the humans and the party. Um, those of you that are operating off a charge get a bit of a juice up, but maybe not all the way to a top up. Um, Stavros makes his way back, but he sort of arrives in his um, government uniform instead of his pajamas, which is nice. Um, and he sort of welcomes you and sort of, um, uh, at least now that it is the morning, he's able to prepare sort of a, a bit of a, a better meal, uh, at least for the humans of the party. Um, and sort of, um, sort of says, uh, uh, again, thank you for coming so quickly last night. Apologies, I was not more awake. I truly was not expecting you to come back so quickly. Um <clears throat> I think we should be able to get started for the day. I'm just waiting on my assistant. Um, unfortunately, Alexander is just ah, quite uh, sluggish in the mornings. Uh, and he begins to like serve a uh, nice-ish breakfast for the humans of the party. Oh, you shouldn't have. Thank you, Stavros. I'm kind of like tucking a napkin into my collar. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry about your vending machine. My like, vending machine? What? But pretty hungry. Oh. Uh, I probably had some coins laying around if you uh, sort of, again, looking at your sort of stature and your height. So this is, um, uh, don't worry. I, th I think it was broken anyway. <laughs> How far can we push this guy? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'd like to dead hand Raina some coins. <laughs> <laughs> After the fact. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, um, uh, Stavros sort of then indicates like, well, uh, after breakfast, uh, as I mentioned, there are a few things that I, I do need some assistance with. Um, uh, Reina, you indicated you had some skill in programming. Um, as I mentioned, the dish itself, at least the bottom of the dish can shift slightly um, to sort of, you know, reach closer to the horizon. Um, if you'd like to take a look at that, that would be uh, that would very, very beneficial. And if uh, any of the others uh, can sort of have some sort of, uh, even just some basic repair skills, that would be suitable to apply these spare parts where needed to the array, um, predominantly to the reflect dish as well as the feed horn uh, for it. I can certainly provide assistance. Wonderful. Just lead me to where I need to be. Okay. Um, after breakfast is served, he sort of leads you to a sort of an old uh, array of computer terminals. And he sort of says, uh, the, the machinery here, uh, at least the computer systems are quite ancient by our standards. They're, they're pre-tech. I've done what I can with them, but uh, it probably would take the hands of someone a little bit more proficient with the computers uh, to uh, to try and crack it. Shouldn't be too hard. Wonderful. And uh, Reyna takes out his data slab and uh, a mix of wires and begins to yeah plug them in. Sure. Um, to proceed, I would ask from you a programming check. Yep, I will do that. Intelligence programming. Sounds good to me. Difficulty of eight. Ooh, seven. Okay. Under. By itself, that is not enough. Uh, someone can try to p provide an assist in some way. So if you're thinking out of the box, it could be, uh, how might you be able to assist Raynor? Could someone be feeding him snacks? as you go <laughs> something like that <laughs> my skills you're de-referencing a null pointer man <laughs> uh, do you need to use a different uh skill preferably yes but it could be it can be in something unrelated you just have to try and explain how you'd be using it to uh, to help in the situation right uh rv is technically his expertise is uh being and overseeing management repair bot mm -hmm. his whole job is to fix problems like this normally it's to find the right people to assign to tasks and the right parts to assign to the right people uh, but in this instance he might be of some assistance sure uh, he has um, skills that happen to be relevant skills to um, administer things perhaps look I clicked on administer, but it doesn't have a little description, so I can roll with administer. Sure. But I would say administer would be useful in this situation to um, understand some of the bureaucratic, bureaucratic like, sort of knowledge yeah, of okay. the radio telescope. Yeah, yeah, I, I can sort yeah. of see it. Yeah. 
I can go through the manifest of the spare parts box and kind of go, oh, actually, there's this M6 washer and you're using the M5. For the computer, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, look, uh, I rolled an eight to assist Marina. Okay, uh, so because you're doing an assist, because you reached the difficulty check, that provides a plus one to uh, Reina's roll. That gives him a success. Yes. So we could say something along the lines of maybe as you're going through stacks of paperwork that Stavros has elected to not uh, to not do or to not fill out, you actually find an operator's manual, pre-tech operator's manual, that explains some of the uh, sort of foundational systems of how to adjust the array. That's exactly what I needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reina, have you read the instrumentation guide here? It clearly says not to do that. Ah, well, that could be helpful. Yes, uh, let let me quote it to you whilst you do the work. Right. And then Raina (laughs) strikes up a cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) It says right here in the manual, Raina, the entire installation is a non-smoking facility. Do I look like I care? Yeah. You're right, it probably won't harm the instruments. Exactly. Uh, I continue to quote verbatim uh, very boring, lengthy paragraphs from the instructions to Rainer as he fixes the computers. Vicky, so you've probably collected some of the spare parts at this stage. Would that be right? Yeah. Okay. So Stavros indicated there are some components such as on the reflected dish as well as the um, uh, the feeding horn. Um, would you be starting to try and take a look at that? Yeah. So I'm examining the parts mm-hmm. and where they need to go when okay. attempting to fix. Well, that sounds like a fix what? check to me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what uh, a stat would you like behind that? What could you try and justify to me? I would use intelligence. If you think that's best. The parts. Sure. And that is a 10. Okay. Uh, same difficulty of 8. That is a pass. Uh, you find quite clearly that there are some components similar to what Avi mentioned, that the spare parts are a collection of just different pre-tech equipment. Um, but you find uh, quite clearly, at least with your experience of fixing things, that um, the spare parts are suitable in such a way that you sort of figure out where pieces, bits and pieces go. So there's sort of a, an alignment within the array that um, isn't properly bent or like isn't sort of um, warped properly and stuff like that, which can cause problems. So there's a few things that uh, that sort of need to be fixed that would otherwise um, disrupt the, the radio signal that would be received. Yeah. Ah, uh, they do not make parts like these, <laughs> like they used to. Uh, awesome. Now, while this has been happening, um, everyone sort of found their, their their niche except Billy. What's Billy <laughs> been up to? <laughs> Honestly, in character, I think he would be taking the moment to uh, laze around as much as possible and not have to do stuff. Um, but that being said, uh, he's not really good when you're talking about repairing and computers and stuff. He's, he's only good at talking and uh, slightly good at sneaking. So I'm not sure how much help I'm going to okay. be. I am pretty good at administration, though. Hmm. Uh, Stavros sort of sees you sort of sitting around, not really doing anything. He says, uh, I, I don't mean to, uh, to ask, uh, I'm sure you're doing some very busy work there. Um, Watching TV. <laughs> perhaps uh, you could wake up my assistant. Yeah, uh, absolutely I can do that for you. Um, now, uh, where's she taking her peaceful slumber? Uh, Alexander, yes. Um, uh, just in, well, probably is in the room that you, you stayed in last night. Oh, my bad. Uh, where's he? Yes. Okay. Starts hardly walking in the direction uh, of Alexander's bedroom. Uh, okay, you make your way back to like the sort of uh, uh, general sort of sleeping area again. There's sort of like bunk beds mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you walk in to find the the figure that had been sleeping on the bed is continuing to sleep on the bed. Um, they have not really moved uh, much. They've just maybe shuffled a little bit, but they're they're still quite clearly in the in bed. <laughs> really, kind of. Stands looking at him for a sec, thinking about what to do, and then realized every second he takes longer to think about what to do is more creepy to stand over somebody and watch them sleep. So he kind of reaches out tentatively with one hand and gives him one push on the back. It's like, Alexander? You sort of hear a a grunt like, uh, uh. 
Uh, Stavros. Uh, Stavros. He's, he says he's got a call for you in the out in the kitchen. Um, we sort of hear further grunts, um, uh, sort of as, as as Alexander sort of comes to awareness. Um, as you sort of see this this character sort of begin to turn their face, Billy, you actually recognise them as someone that owes you money. Oh no! Um, at the same point, the figure sort of realises who you are, and they sort of um, sort of look to you and they sort of say, uh, "Oh, Billy!" Oh, that Alexander. How are things? Uh, yeah. Look, look, look. I I got the money, right? Okay. I, I got a little bit delayed. Okay. Uh, you're so late on it. Uh, Stavros has had to start paying. Okay, look, look, look. I, I I'll sort you out. Okay. I know, but uh, I've got a friend staying with me. Um, Rayna. He's uh, we're gonna have a little chat later. He's a little taller than I am and a little grumpier, but. No. If I don't get that money by the time we leave, you and Rainer are going to have a little conversation. Yeah, look, 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 I, I can help you. I'm a little short at the moment, but look, if you, you need anything around here, you know? And he starts like, uh, like, uh, we, we got lab equipment, we got microscopes, whatever you want. Are you trying to sell me what Stavros is currently using to pursue the noble, noble cause of science? Uh, we, we got lots of spares. We got lots of spares here. All right. Well, I'll have to ask Stavros about that. But come on. Into the. Were we in the kitchen before? Something like that, sure. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> because we were eating, but I realized we never kind of. Anyways. Well, Billy kept eating, right? I think is the intention. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was imagining. <clears throat> Into the kitchen. I kind of turn on my heel and start walking. Okay. Um, so something I wanted to cover, which is Billy's yeah. foci, um, is, uh, he naturally attracts people or not, not, maybe not naturally, but there are ways that he attracts, uh, people. Um, did you maybe want to explain what uh, Billy's foci is? One of Billy's foci is Henchkeeper. He has two. The other one's Diplomat, but that's about, uh, more about talking for Henchkeeper. Uh, he has a distinct knack. For uh, getting people into his employ, whether that's through the promise of something or uh, through leverage over them, such as owing money, um, he can often pick up people from the environment around him that are willing to do favors for him. Uh, now, these favors are, I'm trying to find the exact wording for it while I speak, but the favors are, I'm quite sure, not violent. Yeah, at this, at level one, yes, I believe. Uh, the underlings you can, are only willing to complete about as much as you are willing to pay them or as you have leverage over them. Um, so they're usually not willing to risk their life, etc. Perfect. So that's pretty much the situation we have with Alexander. Um, they still owe you money and they'll continue to sort of owe you until they at least pay you back for the time being. Um, they go about their job, but they're now keeping you in the back of their mind that they, they owe you. Yeah, I um, I can't imagine how that must be for me to be living, <laughs> like we're in his place of living, uh, when he owes me money. Yeah, he's quite concerned. Uh, so with the uh, work that has been conducted, at least between the four of you, um, Stavros kind of comes back around sort of lunchtime and he says, uh, well, look, I, I appreciate the, again, the urgency in which you've completed the tasks. Uh, I, I believe at least, I think the equipment is now ready to receive the signal in uh what will it be two and a half standard days i suppose um uh, this, this is quite promising i think my my work will be quite successful once i receive this radio signal uh look if you happen to be in town uh after the signal's received i may be able to, to have some further work for you but um uh yes uh of course you know assuming the radio signal is received successfully but you're more than welcome to come back and uh, i may have some further work for you well I can't thank you enough. You've been a very gracious host, Stavros. I uh, hope to enjoy it quite a bit longer. Well, uh, I suppose you're welcome to stay if you wish. There's not much to do up here at the, the telescope. Uh, may I ask, what are the plans with your newly acquired ship? Well, I'd have to, uh, I'd have to speak with my associates, I think. But this is certainly... Uh, Extending uh, capabilities 
wouldn't you agree? In terms of employment. Oh, oh my, yes. Uh, yes, if, if you have an interstellar capable spacecraft, then my, I'm sure I could find some work for you. I, I have friends as well that might have work for you too. Uh, hopefully a bonus or two in there. All right, well, I'm off to chat with them and I'll, uh, I'll have to, we'll have to gather everyone up. Wonderful. Uh, I think everyone else should be completing their tasks shortly. Yeah. Um, and it is at the, around this time that everyone's probably come back from doing their individual tasks. Um, Billy wants to get them up to speed. Well, Stavros has got uh, more work for us, but it's not going to happen until that signal comes in, now that the work's all been finished with the parts. Now, when did you say that signal's coming in again, Stavros? Uh, two days, two and a half days. Two and a half days, all right. Yeah. So we'd better get busy. What say you, IV? Yes, yes, we've, we've all been quite useful. Uh, I'm very keen to see if we continue to be useful yeah uh at least for the next two days or so uh f for a long time um i think we work very effectively i think we work pretty well together isn't that right rainbows fuck you <laughs> <laughs> uh okay well um again stavros is as welcoming as he can be sort of not very, very politely sort of say, well, again, thank you for so much for your help. Uh, as mentioned, I should have some work for you in a few days. Very politely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Gets a chair and sits down again. <laughs> well, so how about another coffee? <laughs> Before we wrap up, uh, can we revisit what RV was up to overnight? Oh, yes. Uh, RV has some alternative uh, ambitions here. Uh, and he'd like to have installed some kind of recording device in the radio telescope Sure. whilst uh, everyone else is asleep. Uh, I would say that is good, yep. So, yeah, while everyone else was either sleeping, um, Vicky was charging on the ship. Um, so RV was sort of wandering the halls. So is the intention to pick up the incoming signals that Stavros is expecting? Yeah, in a few days' time. Okay. Um, I would like to roll a note check in terms of knowing how the radar installation works. Sure. And I do have an instruction manual for some parts of it. That makes sense. Uh, uh, with the I'm instruction roll. manual, we'll say it's an easy roll, DC6. Cool. Uh, rolling intelligence, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, nice. I rolled a 12. Uh, yeah. Uh, surprisingly, you have some knowledge that you've gained <laughs> regarding radio telescopes. Uh, wonderful. Uh, so yes, I would have installed that in the multitudes of different equipment sure. uh, overnight. Yeah. And like, hopefully uh, I can come back to collect it. It's like a couple of redundancies uh, as well. Mm, mm. It's just surreptitious, quiet little things. Okay. Um, one of the main best locations probably would be in like, there's a section which is basically like the signal booster as it sort of comes in off the dish. Um, you... Uh, install like yeah these tiny little sort of um, devices that can essentially pick up the signals as it runs through the, the machinery um, but just confirming so the machines themselves though only uh, like they save locally they don't they're not saving to like a network they're not saving yep, to like yep. the broadband okay mm. yeah it's just like a little usb key okay if anyone remembers those from last millennial yeah <laughs> awesome uh all right yeah well uh, assuming you can get back to those, then yes, they will ideally have saved some data the next time you go. Um, so with a few days of downtime, um, I guess you have some time with your newly stolen ship to consider what you'd like to do. Uh, again, Stavros has some available jobs, but you can also look around for different work as well with your at least atmospheric capable ship on uh, on the planet. Um what is everyone thinking in terms of their next ambitions and goals? Are you going to stay around the city center, fly around for a bit? What's everyone thinking? Vicky wants to find some repair parts for the ship. Okay. To fix the uh, vacuum. Sure. Billy wants to make more money so that uh, he can pay back the people he's owing and uh, find a place to sleep and, you know, food and water for the foreseeable future. So uh, more money, more jobs as soon as possible and paying back the people he needs to pay back. Uh, is Billy expecting to enforce his 
henchman-ness over Alexander? Or are you happy to keep him in the uh, radio telescope for the time being? I think uh, I'm happy to keep him in the radio telescope. I don't, uh, I don't think Billy would want to kind of uh, move him out of his current, like where he lives. Mm -hmm. uh, to, I don't really see the extent of his usefulness in our continued adventures. He's more of a liability at the moment, like, considering. Fair. Yeah. You'll pick up more as we go, I'm sure. Yes. And uh, what about Raynor? What's Raynor's ambitions? It was just to make more money, actually. Okay. And then um, over time, probably upgrade the ship that we have. Awesome. So just to be clear, uh, Calix, Sasha, and Dartum, they didn't own the ship, right? They stole it themselves. Did you ask them? No, I, I assume they had stolen it. Assumed why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they just seem like the sort of people I, that would I, steal I, a ship? Yeah. Do you see what Dartum looks like? <laughs> well, fair point. Fair <laughs> point. Even had the word recompense. Yeah, is there something on the ship that uh, has like a register of who owns it? Uh, well, so there is a ship's computer. Uh, I have some data on this. Um, there is a ship's computer, which uh, at some point has uh, Vicky decided to take a quick look at. Yeah. Okay. So during some downtime after you've completed the main tasks, um, I will say that without a check, you're able to pull up some very basic information on the ship's computer. Um, from Vicky's experience as a pilot, though, you realize that this operating system uh, of, the, of the ship's computer is quite clean. It feels very new, like there's not much on it yet. Um, you feel like the main ship's operating system has been wiped recently. Um, and it's more like there's different sort of types of um, systems for like pretext systems versus POSTEC. And this is designed more for like a pos tech capable pilot. So you have a feeling that the operating system has been wiped recently. Um, you know that the ship's registered ID code when the operating system was reset, uh, its ID code was set to the name Argo, A-R-G-O, as the ship's name, ship's computer. Um, and the at least as far as the ship is concerned, the current captain designation is Keelix Bane. Okay. So is it possible that they wiped... The computer. Uh, you're not sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm aware, they do actually own it. Uh, again, you don't have that yeah. information at hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is just what like the ship has recorded. This is just like putting your name like on, I don't know, uh, like internally like writing your name on a car or something like that. Yeah. So it's not official paperwork. It's just what they put on the computer. Okay. That makes sense. Um, you can try to inspect the computer to get some more information. If you wanted to try and dig into it a little bit further, yeah, I mean, I can try with program. I'm not going to be very good at it, but I can always have a little go. Yeah, you can give it a go, and then if that fails, you may be able to reach out to the wider team as a whole. Yeah, uh, maybe intelligence or wisdom. Uh, that is a uh, nine. Okay. For programming. Um, I can give you one more piece of advice with a nine. Um, Looking through the systems, you realize while the operating system itself has been replaced, the computer architecture as well as the actual hardware, uh, sorry, firmware, um, is very old compared to POSTEC standard. Um, it looks to indicate that the technology of the ship itself would have been around during the Mandate era, similar to what you would have been used to at the time. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like it's a much older ship that has been wiped recently. Cool. Um, and it has some potentially some like uh, previous mandate information somewhere on it um, that has been mostly wiped by the operating system uh, reset. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so with that set in mind, I think everyone's got at least some plans. So the main criteria was to find some jobs. Is that right? Yeah. Make some money. This will assist with buying parts. So yeah, finding a job is probably okay. the next step. Awesome. Uh, cool. Well, we'll leave it there, at least for our listeners. Um, so thank you for your players for playing. Thank you for our listeners for listening. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Stellar Drift. See you next time. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye. 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 Some music used in this episode is courtesy of Tabletop RPG Music. You can find their details in the description of this episode. 
If you like the show, please consider giving us a rating or review on your podcasting app. It helps us reach more listeners. Thanks.